James Baldwin agreed to make a film about his life as a writer rather than as a political figure. Paris seemed an obvious location, as it was here that his career as a successful writer began. Several of his books are set in Paris, and he still spends a lot of his time here. Filming began normally enough. Baldwin reminisced about his original decision to leave New York. When and why did I first come to Paris? When was November 11th, 1948? It was a matter of life or death. You can't turn your back in America long enough to write a book or to find out who you are. I had to be in a desperate situation to come so far with forty dollars. I don't know how I live. I sold my clothes, I remember that. I sold my typewriter, I remember that. And some of you got very nasty with me because I didn't have any money. I hit the streets, of course. You know, like uh, I can't describe to any in, anyone who's been there knows what I did. And anyone who hasn't been, I cannot tell. You know. I don't know what I did. I got through one day to the next, you know, for four years. How I did it, I don't know. No one I knew had any money. The great terror was not, my, not to let my family know, because what could they do? Except, you know, just be scared shitless that Jimmy was in, in trouble. Miles and miles away, they couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> After shooting began, Baldwin's attitude started to change and he became less cooperative. He did, however, agree to be filmed in the Algerian Quarter, the Harlem of Paris. I must say the Algerians, were, they were very nice to me because they understood the city and I did not. I didn't know these streets. And they protected me in these streets. And no one else could have. The Algerian in France is a nigger in America. By now, Baldwin was saying that he was no longer interested in his work as a writer or his time in Paris. He suddenly refused to film sequences depicting his present life here. I am not really back in Paris. I'm not going to stay here, that I know. Where do you think we're sitting? In Paris? Next door to Washington? My country runs the world. Owns the world. As Mr. Heath probably be glad to tell you. I'm in a position in which everyone in the world can claim me and has the right to claim me. I'm one of the very few dark people in the world who have a voice. That means something which no white writer can mean at this point in the world's history. And I can't really escape that. I don't think I should even try. By this time, Baldwin was quite hostile to us and had attracted a group of black American students whom he wanted to accompany him whenever he was filming. One of them was particularly dominant and insisted, with Baldwin's agreement, that we film at the Place de la Bastille, symbol of the French Revolution. Can you tell us why we're here in this place? Yes, people came out of those streets not very long ago to tear down this prison. And my point is the prison is still really here. You know, we build it all the time. I'm speaking more about my own country than I'm speaking about, than I'm speaking about France. I represent at this moment many political prisoners in America. That's why I wanted to come here today. Is that also why you, I mean, you veered the, this film off your literary work. What? You veered the film off your literary work and on to what you feel rather than what you write. It isn't much what I feel, Terry. It's what I know. If my work is any good, it'll last. No, I haven't got to talk about that. There's nothing to be said about it. But I do know what is happening now. You know, I'm not so much a writer as I'm a citizen. And I've got to bear witness to something which I know. So why? Won't you allow us to project you through your work instead of you as you are? I'm perfectly willing to. I don't see how you can do it. You know. Well, we had a system. We had a scheme. Yes. 
and you obviously weren't sympathetic to it. That has nothing whatever to do with something else, which I represent whether or not I like it. I could be Bobby Seale. I could be Angela Davis. But you couldn't. I could be Medgar Evers. You couldn't because you are a writer. And that... What's the problem? What are we doing wrong? Don't put a new camera on me. Well, what are we doing wrong? You're telling me I'm doing wrong. Tell me. In the first place, you're not honest. In what way? All right. You know, I explained to you that we wanted to do certain things a certain way, right? No, you didn't. Right? We just talked about that a few minutes Explain ago. Explain it to me again. Right? I told you that you, we were going to ask, ask the brother a question, right? Yeah, I'm going to do it a certain way. All right. And you agreed. You didn't ask him. You yes, know? I did. Don't tell me your memory. Is that short? Did you go I to asked him. What, what was the first question you asked him? You know perfectly well. I'm not getting into this. Now, what was the first question you asked him? I asked him why he was here, which is what the question we agreed to ask him. What the Bastille No, that wasn't it. the question we agreed to ask him, right? Yes, it was. All right, well, tell me what it was, and I'll put it to him right now. I told, I told you to ask him how would he account for the fact that the Bastille today is still the most popular monument in France. Right. Period. That's not the same thing. You know? The question we've been told to ask is why do you think the Bastille is the most popular monument in France today? Well, it's not the most popular. Then why was I told to ask that question? I mean, there is a significance to this monument which I've asked you about. Now, I've been challenged, I've been criticized, and I've been told that I didn't ask the question in the right way. So how should I have asked it? It's an honest question. Jerry, I know what is happening here. Well, what? Tell us what what's happening. What is happening is that he has something in his mind, and I something in my mind, too, which you don't quite see. And now you're doing something Really, you know, rather against your will, without quite knowing what it is. Look, I am not interested in Jimmy Baldwin's Paris. Right. I am not the least interested in my 22 years in this city. It's of no importance at all. Right. What is important is I'm a survivor of something and a witness to something. That is what matters. Right. And that is all that matters. I'm not speaking for me. I'm much too, I'm much too proud for one thing, to speak for my own work. My work will speak for itself or it won't. But I am a black man in the middle of this century. And I speak for that to all of you, the English, the French, the Irish, all of you. Because none of you know yet who this dark stranger is. None of you know it. And that is what this quarrel is really about. I'm not at all what you think I am. I'm very different than that. Well, what I have something else to do. What exactly do you, do you think we think you are? I think you think that I'm an exotic survivor. I don't know what Carl was trying to say, but I'm telling, I'm telling you this. Because he looks the way he looks. And for no other reason. For no other reason. He could be dead in the morning. That isn't true of you or any of you. It's true of him. That is what your civilization means. And that's what you don't want to find out. I've known boys like that all my life. Half of them are dead. Because they're black. But now you, you say that. You, you say that, and we could, we could argue that we do know that, that we do know that, and that's do why you? we're here. Do you? So now, how do you know we don't know that? Because of the way, I know you don't know it because of the way you, you talk to him. I'm trying to solicit something from him. I'm trying to get him to communicate with me in a genuine way, which he isn't. He's communicating with he me from has, behind a barrier, which he I, I don't want to He has a life to lose. You don't. Yeah, and your books have awakened us to that fact to the extent that we wanted to come here and make a film about it because that's yes. our means of all communication. Right. Now that's we, our means all right, of now, communication. Okay, all right, now we can start. We had to get to this point before we get any further. Well, where do we go from here, then? 
I would tell you if I could. I really would. I know you would. We would tell you if we could. And you keep saying to me, you're making a movie. And I keep saying to you, no, we need you to make the movie. That's what I'm trying to tell you, is that... When they tore this prison down, that was a great event in European history. And Europe understands that. I am trying to tear our prison down, too. That event doesn't yet occur in European imagination. I am still, for Europe, a savage. When a white man tears down a prison, he is trying to liberate himself. When I tear down a prison, I'm, I'm suddenly turning into another savage. Because you don't understand that you, for me, are my prisoner. You are my warden. I am battling you. Not you, Terry. But you, the English, you, the French. A whole way of life, a whole system of thought, which has kept me in prison until this hour. But well, why are we here? You are trying to find out. And I'm telling you what you don't know. You want to find out? Yes. You better. You better. <laughs> we have, as you say, this complete lack of communication because we're, I'm attempting to do something which you... You see, the point is you already know the answer. And I'm trying to find the answer, and I'm trying to show the answer. I know, but I've got to be able to talk to somebody. If we're going to get this movie done. You've got to talk to people, yeah. all right. Is the mic on? The talking with the students and others took place in the studio of Beaufort Delaney, an old painter friend of Baldwin's. As the conversation progressed, Baldwin's background as a young Baptist preacher in Harlem became very apparent. All right, now Fabian has already told me she hasn't, she hasn't read any of James's books, right? You know, and I know that she's only met him the other day. So I'm going I'm to ask her, what does she think of him? Being black, I respected him as a black man, especially as, as a black writer. And you're older than I am, so I, respect, I respected you, sort of like I respect my parents. And you, you've achieved in, in the world. Um, you've gotten up, you, you've made your, name made, to the, made your name known to the world because I'm young, I'm only 20 years old, and you're sort of like inspiration to the young black people in America. The first time I had the opportunity of reading uh, your book, uh, Another Country, I believe, and this was quite some time ago, but that was the first book I ever read from cover to cover, and I haven't read another since. And, uh, <laughs> really, and I still remember the characters and everything, and this, this really did a lot for me, you know what? I know that from my own point of view, you know, it was... It was, in a sense, all for you, <laughs> you know. I mean, I know that I love you. I know. But you haven't necessarily got, you haven't necessarily got to know that, you know. And I suppose I never thought that I would um, live to hear you say that you love me. That sounds very corny, but, <laughs> but you know what I mean. In his essays, if you've read them, Jimmy does talk about coming to Paris. Is it possible for you to talk to him about why you individually left the States and compare it with why he individually yeah, left no, the States? It ain't yeah. nobody else's business, really. Well, I'll tell you why it's nobody's business. All right. Because. It's not relevant to anyone with us, but us. It doesn't help anyone or it doesn't hurt anyone. We can talk about it, but, like, we don't want to talk to you about it. But I can tell you something about it. Yeah. Yeah, right. The 20 years, the 22 years from 1948 and 1971. And speaking, you know, speaking now as Jimmy, you know, and speaking as a black American who was, you know, who was once as young as these children are now. And why I left my country. I left it because I knew I was going to be murdered there. And I, when I say that, I'm not, you know, exaggerating. That's not a melodramatic statement. I mean that 
I mean, that was... <laughs> <laughs> right on. Right on. <laughs> I mean, that I could not have hoped to live if I had stayed there. Now, I come from a country which is very proud of calling itself a democracy, and is very proud of what it calls progress. And I'm pointing out to you that 22 years later, boys and girls just like I was then, in spite of all that democracy and all that progress, had to leave the country, our country, for the same reason that I left it. In 1948, there was Truman in the White House, right? <laughs> and he just dropped a bomb in Hiroshima. And in 1971, there's who in the White House? Dick Nixon. Who? Hmm? Richard Milhouse. What do they expect from us? The darker brother. Right on, right on, right on. Yeah. I've had a hard life. No. Right <laughs> <laughs> on. But my dear, no, really, I know it sounds a terrible thing to say. I would not be a white American for all the tea in China, all the oil in Texas. <laughs> I really wouldn't like to have to live with all those lies. Yeah, yeah. They can see what <laughs> This is what is irreducible and awful. You, the English, you, the French, you, the West, you, the Christians. You can't help but feel that there is something that you can do for me. That you can save me. And... You don't yet know that I have endured your salvation so long. I cannot afford it anymore. Not another moment of your salvation. And that I, 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 I can save you. I know something about you. I know something about you. You don't know anything about me. Amen. Right on. That would take the time to find out. That is where it really is. You could find out like this. Right on. Amen. It's a matter. It's a matter almost of a division of how can I put it? Division of labor. Division of labor. Thank you. Yes. You know, he can do some things that you can't do. I know this. You can do some things that he can't do. I can do some things that neither of you can do. Right. 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 You know, I know I can't you drive a truck. Feel messed up. Can you let me feel you know, messed up? And I can't run a bank. Right. You know, I can't count. And I can't lead a movement. But I can fuck up your mind. Right. 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 <laughs> and, 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 and he can straighten up your mind, too. What's going to happen? Sooner or later. All the wretched of the earth. In one way or another, next Tuesday or next Wednesday, will destroy the cobblestones in which London and Rome and Paris are built. The world will change, because it has to change. And the Pope will die, because the church is a criminal church. <laughs> The party is over. <laughs> that is what is going to happen. It was only after this group witness that Baldwin finally agreed to talk personally about his difficult position as a political figure and a creative writer. After all, I... No one asked me to be a writer. No, I asked for it. So, you know, I can't, I can't really complain. No, it comes with the territory. I was born at a certain time, in a certain skin, in a certain place. And you pay for it. Everybody pays for that. 
Do you think you could describe yourself as a revolutionary writer? I don't know what I, I'm a writer in a revolutionary situation. I never thought of becoming a revolutionary after all. You express your ideas in terms of a mental transformation on the part of white people. How much do you think your fictional work is therefore stronger than your essays, in, the, in that they are more subversive? It's a leading question, and it's impossible for anybody, you know, I, I can't answer that. You know, I, I write the essays, I write the books, and what you make of them is, what people make of those things is, is not, you know, is not to me. I know that, you know, in principle, that, um, um, a play or a novel, if it works, is much more dangerous for the writer and the reader. It's much easier to dismiss the fire next time as an argument with which one can agree or disagree like a debate. Whereas in another country, you are faced with some very real human situations uh, with which no one cannot identify in some way or another. Oh, that depends on many things. Many people can, can fail to identify with the people in another country. In fact, they do. You know, I mean, in life, I mean, I'm not talking about my book. But, I mean, everybody's been in love. Everyone's had a love. Has anyone been in love? Everyone's had a love affair which has been threatened. Don't you think that's so? Not on the basis of the evidence. If they had, they've forgotten it. You can't prove it by me that everyone's been in love. If everyone had been in love, they'd treat their children differently. They'd treat each other differently. Yes, well, but perhaps that, that, is, that is one of the points in another country, which, which it seems to me as much about love as about anything else. It is it's about more. love. It's more. It is it's about, about the price of love, too. Which is the price of life. Yes, but people don't seem to realize that. In a, in a literal sense, you're writing for white people. Are you aware of that? I'm writing for people, baby. No, I don't believe in white people. I don't believe in black people either, for that matter. But I know the difference between being black and white in this, and, and, and at this time. It means that I cannot fool myself about some things that I could fool myself about if I were white. But more white people read your novels, I believe, than black people. Well, black people may not read them, but they steal them. And they sell them the hot in bars. You do spend a long time between novels. Why is that? Well, I'm that kind of writer. There's no answer to that, you know. Some people write, I wish I was George Simenon. People write them in two weeks, but I can't. And I, you know, everybody works the way he can work. I must point out, though, too, that I've been working in the last few years between assassinations. That doesn't make it any easier either. I mean, they're killing my friends. It's as simple as that. And I've been all the years that I've been alive. For no reasons which, you know, which, are, which have any validity. Why don't you just want to get away from somewhere and sit down and write your books? Why don't you want to do that? Because I'm better than that. But you don't have to be better than that. Oh, I do. So you don't agree then? I mean, when people say, oh, it's okay for him, he's escaped. What have I escaped? Where, anyway, would I go to escape? To your country? Would I get a political asylum here? Where would a fleeing black man go if he wanted to escape? There may not be, you know, as much humanity in the world as one would like to see. But there is some. There's more than one would think. In any case, if you, if you break faith with what you know, that's a betrayal of many, 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 many people. I may know six people, but that's enough. Love has never been a popular movement. And no one's ever wanted really to be free.
The world is held together, really it is held together, by the love and the passion of very few people. Otherwise, of course, you can despair. Walk down the street of any city, any afternoon, and look around you. What you've got to remember is what you're looking at is also you. Everyone you're looking at is also you. You could be that person. You could be that monster. You could be that cop. And you have to decide in yourself not to be. The logic of despair is for me. You know, cut your throat, right? But there's something wrong, you know, with someone who says he's in despair who keeps on writing. Because a despairing man doesn't write. Anyway, it's too easy, it's too fashionable. I'm aware, you know, that I and the people I love may perish in the morning. I know that. But there's a light on our faces now. If you live under the shadow of death, it gives you a certain freedom. So I'm perfectly happy. Out of the town, you know, and relatively free. <laughs>